How are you? I'm Dylan Black. Welcome to this edition of Daytime Ottawa. We have a giveaway to kick off the program. Check it out. Mary Poppins Returns will be available on digital and Blu-ray tomorrow. It's March 19th, but you can win a copy right now. All you have to do is email us. So simple. Daytime Ottawa at rogers.com and then you're into the draw. Good luck. I'm sure Mary Poppins knows a few things, being British and all, about pasties. Let's say hello to Matt Grant from the Great British Pasty and Pie Company. Hi, Dylan. Nice, nice to have to you here. You. Likewise. Ta well, your uh, business hasn't been around for too long at this point. How many years? Uh, into my sixth uh, summer now. 2013 yeah. was when uh, I started the business, so... Congratulations. Time flies. I say the word pasty. Uh, not everybody knows that word, perhaps. What what goes into a pasty? What is a pasty? So a pasty, it's a, it's a hand pie. Uh, semicircular shaped. If it's from Cornwall, it's crimped around the edge. I'll show you in a little second. Yeah. Uh, if it's from Devon, which is next county over, it's normally crimped over the top. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's so past the etiquette right there. That's right. And you there's a lot of uh, sort of chatter as where the first pasty came from, whether it's Devon or was it Cornwall? But okay. I think it's Cornwall. You're not talking about Cornwall, Ontario here, are you? No, Cornwall, no. England, the <laughs> southernmost county in uh, in the UK. Okay, now you were actually there recently because yeah. you were part of a championship, a pasty championship? Yeah, at, uh, in Cornwall, at the Eden Project, they hold every year the World Pasty Championships. So they have everyone from all over the world, uh, toughest competitions from the locals, um, and then everyone enters their pasty and they're judged, and then they... Uh, they crown, uh, crown a winner. Mm -hmm. uh, I was lucky enough one year to receive the top award there, which is the Ambassador Award. Mm. This is uh, an award they get for people who are exceptional in the pasty business or, yeah. uh, you know, they contribute a lot to pasty. So I was very pleased to get that one. So what happened this time around? Now, you told me the story. It kind of sounds uh, interesting because it was you were up for the world's smallest pasty, but yours was too small? Uh, no, I, um, I entered uh, the world's smallest pasty. Um, there isn't a class for it. Uh, most pasties are about this size, but I thought, you know what, there's, there's the world's biggest pasty, which I've seen, which is, it's enormous. Mm -hmm. uh, a little tough for me to uh, transport down there. Mm -hmm. I thought, I don't think there's the smallest one, so I'm going to have a crack at making the, uh, the smallest pasty. We had a picture up, and it, was that a view with a very small Yeah, pasty? holding on like this, yeah, that's, that is yeah. the world's smallest pasty. So uh, the Guinness World Records has all the details and stuff, so I'm just waiting to hear back uh, from them. But okay. uh, so far, so good. <laughs> but, but you weren't allowed to compete, is what happened. No, they disqualified it because they said there isn't enough pasty for the judges to taste. Interesting. So I know, the world's smallest pasty disqualified <laughs> for being... Too small. Go yeah. Figure. Well, you have brought some uh, pasties for us to taste here I today. I do. So two different types, but yeah. you have 17 in total? I've got 17 different varieties. Wow. Uh, they're super easy. Just pop them in the oven on the rack, 20 minutes at 350 from frozen. They're good to go. Mm -hmm. They make uh, great school lunches for kids they can take with them. I'll chat with that with you about that a little mm -hmm. further on. Um, but the ones we have here today is the Cornish, mm -hmm. which is the large version of the smallest one I put in. It's the most traditional. It's cube steak, potatoes, onions, and rutabaga. Mm. And you're in for a treat today because the other one I brought is the Cartwright Spring Steak and Stout Pasty. Okay. I make a steak and Guinness pasty. This one is made with local uh, beer from Cartwright Springs Brewery in Packenham. That's wonderful. And yeah. before the show, you even pop this into the oven. How long should they be? Uh, 20 minutes at 350 on the rack, no pan from frozen. Okay. The pastry is very thin. Uh, I flash freeze them as soon as they're made to keep the freshness in. And they will, they will store in the freezer for six months. They're in a high quality freezer bag. This is how they come. They're all labeled as to which type it is and the instructor on there and my contact info is on there mm -hmm. in case of allergy concerns or if you forget what the instructions are. Okay, so and you said I'm in, in for a treat because you want me to sample this. Yes, I want you to try the, to. Uh, the, okay. the steak and stout one I, from I Cartwright. I even asked you before uh, we started that uh, should there be cutlery? Should I should I? No, the, a knife these are a hand pie. Generally, like, I cut them in half so you can see, but generally, and I shouldn't pick it up, but this is how you would eat it. You just start one end and work your way through. It's <laughs> okay. the original fast food. I'm going to start one end here and work my way through. Yeah. Okay, so, so one more time, what uh, what type is this? So that's the steak and stout pasty mm. with Cartwright Springs Stout. So it's a local stout brewed in Pakenham, Ontario. Mm -hmm. And this is his exclusive. You can only get them at his brewery. So I stole one out of his, <laughs> I stole one out of his freezer today to bring mm. in. That is so good. And you were saying that this is easy... Uh, for lunches, school lunches. Yeah, I've got like a lot of my customers, busy parents and stuff, uh, getting dinner ready for the kids. They can just pop them in the oven. Also, I have customers who heat them up in the morning. They wrap them in foil and then they pop them in the oven glove 
and they would go with their husband to work or they go with their kids to school and the past is still warm and they go to have their lunch. Mm -hmm. uh, on, on weekends I always see you on social media because you are out and about and you are selling these pasties. Yeah. Where can people find you normally? So uh, if you keep an eye on the website, I've got a calendar at the bottom of the, the website, every page that tells you where I'm going to be. Uh, static locations, you've got Cartwright Springs Brewery in Packingham. He has a variety of my most popular ones and of course his own exclusive pasty. Mm -hmm. Um, Needham's Market Garden in Packingham, that's where all my produce comes from. So all my potatoes and stuff, I get as much local stuff as I can. He has a little farm shop there and I'm, it's not open yet. You can go by appointment, but uh, I think in the next month or so, a store will be open. I have a freezer with my most popular ones there as well. That's something. Can I ask how many you think you have created over the years? Oh my God. How many different pasties? <laughs> it, it's crazy because when I first started, I started with a little KitchenAid a mixer, a little tabletop mixer, which I burnt out in three months. The mixer I have now, um, I've not a story yet. Uh, it will take 80 kilos of uh, of dough. Yeah. So it, it's massive. It, it's so you've made quite a few over the years. Yeah, I've made, uh, oh, I, I couldn't even. <laughs> you believe in good, honest food, though. That, that's one of the main reasons why you got into this. You yeah. want to make sure people have fresh, local produce as well, very important to you? Yeah, well, I, I couldn't find a good pasty. Uh, like, I was having a rough day. I thought back to when I was in England eating a pasty, having a great time, couldn't find anything. So I'm like, I'm gonna have a go at making it myself. Mm -hmm. So I made a couple, I thought they were pretty good. My friends happened to be over, they just ripped through them and they're like, you need to, you need to start making these, or at least make us some more. Yeah. And then that's, that's how it started. It's exceptional as well. It tastes uh, good, after yeah. taste, it's just, it's wonderful. Um, I recommend this for sure. Matt Grant, the Great British Pasty and Pie Company. Nice Great. to have you Thank here. Thank you so much. I Wonderful appreciate stuff. it. Tasty with more daytime coming up on Rogers TV.